this finger. That's the only finger I ever want you to use in your eye. Okay? That's a finger that you would not dial a phone with. I'm so excited about you all join, joining us for our empowerment party. Are you excited? Yes. Woo! Awesome. Awesome. So today we're going to be doing some fun things, giving some great information. If you have some questions, you can ask. Um, I want to introduce myself, but I want to know a little bit about you also. So my name is Ava Story. I am a wife, mother of six. And I came from Gary, Indiana originally, by way of a lot of places to Atlanta. And so I've been a, a skincare consultant for 24 years now. So I may know a little bit about what you, what you have concerns about. Now, I'd like to know your name. I'm Angela. Angela, thank you. You want to tell us something that you love to do, Angela? I love to help people, and I also love to work out. Okay, okay. Angela loves to work out. Uh, my name is um, Nicole. Okay, Nicole. What do you love to do? Um, shop. Ah, <laughs> okay. Nicole loves to shop. My name is Ann. I love to eat. All right, Ann. I'm with you. <laughs> love to eat too. My name is Trinity. I love to sing. You love to sing. Now, mm -hmm. just as all of you have a different love, everybody has a different skin type. Okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about your skin type and the importance of skin care. And you're going to learn exactly how to take care of your skin so that you can look this beautiful 20, 30 years from now. Is that good? Yeah. All right. So the first thing I want you to really understand about skin care is that there are certain ways that you want to make sure you handle your skin. You always want to be very gentle with your skin. So I want you all to do this with me. In working with your skin, you always want to go up. You're going to do this with me? <laughs> up in the majority of your face, around on your forehead, and down on your nose. Now the reason you want to do that is that you always want to give yourself a little mini facelift. Okay? If you just move your hands around your face, you're stretching and pulling, and when we're 80 and beautiful, we don't want it to look like we've been stretching and pulling, right? right? Okay, so it's very important that you do that. Anytime you're working with your face, you also want to work with your throat area. It's very important, and I think a lot of times people miss that. All right, now I want you to hold your hands up and shake your ring finger. You see, that's your weakest finger. That's the only finger I ever want you to use in your eye area, okay? That's a finger that you would not dial a phone with, right? right? So only use that finger in the eye area. That's because the tissues in your eye area are the most gentle tissues on your whole body. You also don't have any oil glands in that area. So that's why your eye area dries out very quickly, okay? So the first step to your skincare regimen is always going to be to cleanse. But before you cleanse, I want you to make sure that you wash your hands, okay? Because if you're doing this at night, you've been out all day dealing with life. And so you don't want that life to end up on your face, right? right? Okay, so you're going to wash your hands, and then you're going to use your cleanser. And when you use your cleanser, you're going to dab a little bit in your hand and dot it around your face. 
And once you do that, again, you're going to use those same motions around on the forehead and down in your nose area, okay? And which fingers you're going to use? The ring. the ring fingers for your eye area, okay? So once you use your cleanser, I want you to always, always use a clean face cloth every time because you don't want debris from using a face cloth you've used before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to use a clean face cloth, and again, you're going to use those same strokes. You'll get so used to it. Within a week, automatically, that's what your hands will do when they come near your face. Okay? So once you remove your cleanser, the next step is exfoliating. Now, when you exfoliate, the purpose is to remove any dead skin cells. You know that. And so it's important. Sometimes you can have a cleanser that has an exfoliant in it. And that makes it very easy because every time you cleanse your face, you're going to be exfoliating also. Okay. And when you exfoliate, you're showing brand new skin. You're removing that dead skin. And so your skin will actually look brighter. If you di actually did an exfoliant on one side of your face, you could probably tell the difference when you looked in the mirror. Okay? So usually an ex exfoliant by itself might be a mask. And you're familiar with mask? Yes. Anytime you use a mask, I want you to make sure that you leave your eye area out, sort of like a raccoon look, okay? Because you don't want that mask drying in that eye area, right? So just leave that out and put the mask on the rest of your face and remember your throat also. Most masks tell you to keep them on for about 15 minutes. Then you want to use a face cloth, warm water, not hot, warm and massage the mask off. When you're doing that, that's what's going to remove the dry and dead skin cells, okay? And you make sure that you get any grittiness that comes from that mask off of your face at that point. Now, at this time, you may use a different product, um, anti-aging product if you're 40 or over, but it's very important that you take the time to put vitamins, and nutrients on your skin, okay? So at this point, you're using an anti-aging product. Those of you that may not feel that you need that, you're gonna skip that. But those of us who enjoy that, enjoy thinking about that, we're gonna use that. And when you use a serum, and you've heard about serums, seen them on TV, anytime you use a serum, you wanna use it at night. And so a serum itself, it helps just rejuvenate your skin. And so if you use the serum that has vitamins in it, usually a vitamin E, then you are enhancing your skin versus just cleansing and moisturizing, okay? Do a little bit extra, take the time. Now, once you have your serum on, if you're gonna use that, or if you've just exfoliated, you go straight to the moisturizing step. Now, moisturization is very, very key. That is what is going to keep you looking wonderful. You need to always hydrate and moisturize, okay? Now, I prefer moisturi moisturizers that have SPF 30 or higher in them, okay? Because you need sun protection at all times. Most people think, oh, if I'm not at the beach, I don't need to be protected. I don't need sunscreen, right? But that is so untrue because even when it's an overcast day, the sun rays can still get to your skin and damage it. You can get incidental sun exposure simply by going to the mailbox, walking the dog, just that quickly. So if you get up in the morning and your regimen now is morning and night, okay, not just once a day, but morning and night, you get up in the morning and you apply that moisturizer with the sunscreen in it, then you're good. You're protected. Your moisturizer should also say that it hydrates for up to 10 hours. That's very important. <clears throat> so I want you to understand the difference in moisturization and hydration. Moisturization is when you apply something and your skin immediately soaks it up. Hydration is more like a sprinkler system going off. You apply the product. And as the time goes through the day, it's just hydrating a little more during the day over that 10-hour period or whatever your product says 
that it's going to work. So moisturization, hydration, we clear on it? Clear. Are you excited about it? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if you're going to use a moisturizer for a hydrating, what kind of, what would be the best moisturizer that won't clog your pores? Okay. Well, that's an excellent question. You want to look for a moisturizer that says that it's non-comedogenic. That means it will not clog your pores. Non-comedogenic. Okay? And it should say it on that bottle, and that's a very, very important aspect also. Because you don't want clogged pores, because clogged pores bring what? Pimples. Okay? And so, since you ask about that, when it comes to any acne products, if you have family members that you're going to share this information with, when it comes to acne products, you want to put that product on after you exfoliate. Anything that you want going directly into your skin, you want to do it after you exfoliate because that's when your skin is right open, your pores are open. Ladies, I am so excited to talk to you again about your particular skin care. And so I basically assess my clients in two ways. Either you have normal to dry skin or you have combination oily skin. Now combination skin is when you feel like you're oily only in your T-zone. And that's across your forehead and straight down your nose and chin. Does anybody have combination skin? Okay, all right. And oily skin, you usually feel like you look oily. You know, your, your glands are just going. There's always an oil. You feel like you have a sheen on your face. Anybody have oily skin? Well, I'm going to say oily instead of oily. Okay, all right. Nicole has oily skin. So, um, anybody have dry skin? Nope. Combination. All right. So it's very important to know your skin type because when you're looking for your skincare products, you need to shop the product that is specifically for your skin type. Now, I want to share a myth with you. Those that have oily skin think that they don't need a moisturizer. They think a moisturizer is going to make them oilier. But when you exfoliate, and when you have oily skin, you definitely want to exfoliate. You want to cleanse your pores. When you exfoliate, you are stripping your face from any oil. So what happens is your skin sends a message to your brain that says, I'm dry. And then it will start secreting extra oil. And you don't want that to happen. That's why you want to exfoliate when you're oily and put an oil-free moisturizer on immediately so that your skin doesn't just start trying to generate more oil because it feels dried out from cleansing even. Not even just exfoliating, but from cleansing. Okay? That's a great tip? Great tip. Okay. So, you, when you use that, um, Nicole, when you use a product that is for oily skin, a moisturizer, mm -hmm. you will not feel, you should not feel that you're oily at all. Another thing that you want to stay away from is um, alcohol products because alcohol is drying okay and so a lot of times people that have oily skin they think that's going to get rid of the oiliness no you're just drying your skin out and you don't want to do that so always check your products also and make sure that they don't say that they're alcohol based okay well I yes, have a question what can you do about dark marks that you have in your face Okay, what you want to do is use a great exfoliant. You want to use it maybe more than just twice a week, like you normally would. Mm -hmm. And you also want to get a product that helps balance out uneven skin tones. Okay? All right. So now we've gone through the moisturization step, right? 
Now, the next thing I hear so many people telling me, oh, I don't wear foundation. Now, let me tell you why it's important to wear foundation. Foundation is the barrier between the world and your pores, your skin. If you don't wear a foundation, then you're going outside, everything out there is going directly into your pores. There's nothing stopping it. So, okay, so I have a question there. Yes. Because I always thought that even um, foundation, once again, can clog your pores. Mm -hmm. So it's not good to wear it mm -hmm. every day. Not true. Again, you have to be very, very, very particular about the skincare products that you use. Okay. So now you're going to always look for non-comedogenic products yes. because you don't, you're worried about clogging worried your about pores. Clogging pores. Absolutely. Always look for the non-comedogenic products, and you also see that in foundations. Okay? Oh, okay? Now, let me share this with you. Years ago, we would see ladies, and they looked like they had foundation caked on their faces, right? Absolutely, yes. And we said, I'll never wear foundation if I gotta look like that, yes. right? Now let me tell you what they're trying to do. This is a huge beauty secret. What they are trying to do, they were trying to conceal dark spots. We have usually uneven skin tones, but you want a flawless look, right? right, right. And so they were putting on foundation they still would see what they didn't want to see. They put on some more foundation. They still were seeing, but they didn't want to see. So guess what they did? Caked it on. Then they put some powder on top of it because they were determined to not see whatever the blemishes, the flaws were. That's not how we do it. Now, what you want to do is always make sure you have a concealer. So if you have dark spots, if you have moles, some people have freckles. Some people are proud of their freckles. Some don't want to see the freckles. So you want to use a concealer, which is going to conceal what you don't want to see. But then it allows you to put a very light foundation on top of that. Now you're going to have a flawless look. Natural. Okay? Very natural look. You, you look just like you just woke up that morning looking gorgeous. That's right, okay? So, does everybody understand the secret with the foundations? Yes. All right, um, we're going to take a little break and we'll be back in a minute. Ladies, we are excited about having a presentation by hairstylist Ania Williams. Hello. 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 How you doing? What you see here is a quick weave bob I specialize in. There is no glue absolutely on her hair. Um, she's been molded and been tracked. And what you see is it's an angle bob cut with a razor and she has soft feathers. Um, let's see, she has two and a half packs of hair in, and it's very protective of, for her hair. Um, you don't have to worry about no damaging, you don't have to worry about cutting your real hair. You have the versatility of every two weeks you can come in, get your hair done. Um, let me see what else about the bob. Dang, I don't know what else I want to say about it. Yes, um, if you have any questions. I have a question because you just said there was no glue. That was my question. <laughs> okay. There's absolutely, there's glue. The tracks are glued, mm -hmm. but I have a, like a gel, but it's called, do I, wait, hold on. Do I tell them what the product is? Okay. Well, the product is Morning Glory, Morning Glory. and it's like a gel and it gets really, it gets hard mm -hmm. and then you just glue the tracks on top. Okay. So there's no glue on her hair. Okay. When she washes it off, it slides off like a wig. Oh, gotcha. wow. Okay. And you just wash it, deep condition it, and then you ready for your next service again. Um, 
One more, How long question. was your style like that last on top of the morning glory? I have some clients that wear their styles for two weeks okay. to three weeks. I don't recommend anything after three weeks because you have to take care of your hair underneath it. Gotcha. So I say after three weeks, the max you to come back, have it removed, get it deep conditioned, and then we can go proceed to another style or you can get a sew in. Gotcha. Anybody else have a question? Okay. As um, far as this, I offer a lot of, as you see, she's natural for a lot of people that are natural now. This is another style that is able for them to be able to have the flexibility of still getting the style they want without having the permanent hair. This also can be done as a sewing, and it also could be done as your real hair. Um, I'm going to let her see if she could turn around so you can see the back of it. If she can, so you can see the layers in it. And there's no spritz in it, no product, so it's able to move wherever you want it to go, and it goes right back to the way you want it. This is Milky Way, Milky and it's two packs, and then there's also a red tone in it, which is the 99J, okay. and it's a half a pack. Okay. And as you see, it ain't going nowhere, and it's secure. So sexy. And you see I'm messing it up, and it's still going yeah. back to where it wants. <laughs> yeah, so you definitely want to have you able to do it like that. It's easier for you to maintain it at home. You don't have to worry about trying to have to stretch yourself, trying to curl it, because the cut is in there. Gotcha. So, what? Yes. You can wrap it, but the way it's cut, all you have to do at night is put it behind your ear. And put this behind your ear. And then you put your bonnet on. In the morning, you might have to put a light heat on it. But if not, it'll come just like that. Fall right there. And you take a comb, and you just do that. And they'll come right back to where you need it. What do you um, charge for that? This particular style is 65 okay. Um, As far as the sewing, right now I have a special. It's $100 okay. for the sewing part. And that includes a deep condition, a net which protects your hair, okay. and you get a razor cut included. Okay. And the sewing lasts you three months. This lasts you three weeks. Ladies, we are excited about having a presentation. Hi guys, I'm Angela. I know most of you are starting your workout for the first time this month, and congratulations on that. I want to go over some form and some technique so that you are working out safely in the gym. First, let's go over the deadlift. This is Coretta. She has worked out for a while with me, and she's lost over 10 pounds. We're going to go over the deadlift first. Coretta, please show us how to do a deadlift wrong. So most times when I see a deadlift wrong, your back is hunched over and you're putting a lot of strain on the upper back and the lower back. I want you to start with a deadlift coming straight down with the back out, chest out in a chest position. Good. I like to call this bedroom position, ladies, if you get my drift. Only because the back is straight and I want you to come straight back up again, back up again, down and up again. What this does with this formation, it helps Elongate the hamstrings and put the focus on the hamstrings, the glutes, and the lower back, where the focus belongs. This way you're not hurting yourself and you're working the back where you want to, the exercise to work. Next, we're going to work on a squat. A lot of times I see squats done wrong with the heels up and your knees are over your toes. Coretta, will you show me how I see most times people do this? The squat. <laughs> the squat. There we go. A lot of times people do, uh, do the squat, again, with their knees over their toes and their heels are up. This is incorrect only because what happens is as you're coming down, those knees, the force of your weight is going through the knees and not through the hips like we need it to go. We want it to go through the hips because the squat is for the glutes, which is your backside, your quads, and your hamstrings. So Coretta, show us how to do a squat right. Again. Those heels are down, your force is in the backside, 
and you're coming straight down and you're coming straight up. What you're gonna do is try to keep those hands down by your side and keep your, what I like to tell ladies is that you're gonna come down like a squatting over a toilet in a white dress. I'm sorry, but that's the best way to say it. Um, this way your feet or your heels are down and your chest is up. Lastly, we're gonna go over the lunge. Now we're gonna step out into the lunge. A lot of times I see the lunge done wrong with the force of the weight on top of the knee. So a lot of people come up, good, and don't tend to bend that back knee. What I would like for you to do in order for the knee not to keep the safety in the knee, excuse me, we're gonna come straight down, down and up. The position I'm looking for is the shoulders, the hips, and the knee are in perfect alignment and the back heel is off the ground. This keeps safety within the knee and you don't feel it within your joints. It also puts the force in the glutes and in the hamstrings where you want the motion to work. Those are some tips for you and I hope to see you guys soon. I'm Angela Emery. That's good. I love that lunge How into the squat. Lunge? Hmm? How you doing? Same thing. So you just step back, but your form is still the same. Either way, you're 90 degrees. It don't matter which way you go. You're welcome.